with laser systems. Welcome to my workshop. Laser machines are becoming increasingly popular as makers can explore and create products they may have once had limited capacity to do. In addition, it is an accessible route for small businesses to take to have more of an edge on the big box stores. With the increase in popularity, you may have noticed that there are many different types of laser systems out there. But today I hope to break down the three main types, diode, CO2, and the fiber laser. Now you can see which one would be right for you. Diode lasers are usually recognizable because they feature an open gantry system without an enclosure like the CO2 laser you see behind me. It takes up minimal space as the laser is operated through control and motion, and the laser itself is operated through the gantry. The open gantry system allows the laser to be portable and easily movable. It can also be positioned on larger materials for engraving, and you can break up or divide images up so you can manipulate the engraving as well. They are relatively cheap. You can usually find diode lasers for a couple hundred dollars on Amazon or directly through the seller. Um, and it's a perk for beginners because when you're entering the laser world and you want to become familiar with software and cutting and even just terminology, it really gets you off the ground. Recently, our local elementary school put a request in for a diode laser and they received two of them for our fifth graders to be able to bring their ideas to life after school and to create awards and um, little gifts for teachers and students alike. So here they are learning how to create on something small, portable, and we'll prepare them for the next best thing when the time comes. And now I'll welcome you to my world of CO2 lasers with my Eon Mira 9. Most CO2 lasers are recognizable because they are enclosed and feature the laser head on a gantry inside the machine. They also typically include mirrors, so when the laser beam is formed from the tube in the back of the machine, it can travel from mirror to mirror to mirror and down onto the surface for engraving or cutting. With CO2 lasers, the air chiller, air assist, and fume extraction may not be included, which might need to require an additional purchase. Because so many of them do feature an enclosure, the laser size and cut area could be limited to that specific area. Additionally, with CO2 lasers, the laser tube itself would eventually need replaced, though they do tend to last thousands of hours. It could be another investment that you would be in for after a few years. With our Eon Mira 9, the air assist, water chiller, and fume extractor were actually built into the machine, but we just chose to upgrade our system to allow for more optimal performance. CO2 lasers are very powerful. Ranging from a low wattage laser to 120, 130 watts, they're created with power and speed in mind, which makes them perfect for small businesses or people who are entering a larger business scale. By being able to create more in less time, you have more productivity and more chance to actually create and get your items and services out into the world. So naturally, they are a tad bit more expensive than your diode lasers, ranging from thousands to even upwards of $10,000, $15,000 or more, depending on what style and what system you think is right for you. And last, we have fiber lasers. Fiber lasers are for very different uses, so they're essentially not even comparable to the diodes or the CO2 lasers. If you are looking to engrave on or cut metal, then a fiber laser is for you. The setup for fiber lasers are also pretty different than that of CO2 lasers. With a fiber laser, you might have a lower wattage, but again, because you're exclusively using it for specific materials, it still gets the job done. Where you might have a 100 watt CO2 laser, a 20 watt fiber laser might do the job. So it's a pretty low wattage, but they move so fast. It also does not use mirrors like the CO2 laser does. It has a galvo head that stores the laser engine and is separated from the fiber optic cables that allow the laser to travel through the gavel head and down to the surface for engraving. It also does not require a cooler, a pump, or an air assist, but assisted ventilation is always recommended no matter what type of laser you have, as if you can smell it, you're inhaling it. So they don't consider the laser source to be consumable, so a new source will likely not be needed. 
The cost of fiber lasers has come down drastically over the past couple of years, but they are still most comparable to your CO2 laser systems and that you're probably going to invest a couple thousand dollars in order to purchase one. Choosing the right laser for you really depends on two different things, what you would like to use it for, and of course your budget. Once you decide what type of laser is right for you, then also take some time to compare the different models to see which one you feel most comfortable with. In the end, you're making a big step to fulfilling a dream or a goal that you have, and you won't be wrong. Thanks for watching.